Hey everybody, it's Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Uh, let's get started. Linda from Hondo, Texas. <laughs> I grew up in Hondo and Linda's a very good friend. Uh, Linda said, are you going to have the skeleton of the dreaded Hondo Creekosaurus <laughs> at your exhibit? <laughs> Linda, first of all, it's so nice to hear from you. It's always good to hear from people from home. Um, and and uh, I absolutely love you and your family. You guys are, have always been good friends. Um, the Hondo Creekosaurus. <laughs> if we ever find a dinosaur in Hondo, I promise I will name it the Hondo Creek. <laughs> Hondo Creekosaurus. She said, seriously, I'm definitely going to come by your exhibit. Can't wait. Sorry to bog you down with work time with a personal email. I got to tell you something, Linda, nothing. Nothing is better than in the middle of my day to see an email from friends from home. So believe me, you're not bothering me at all. For those of you that don't know, I have a traveling dinosaur exhibit. It opens in San Antonio, Texas, October 15th through November the 1st. Uh, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, and you'll see all the information about it, and I hope you can make it. Linda, I hope to see you there. It'll be fun seeing you again. Uh, maybe I'll run into you at Mondo's or Hermeson sometimes. But until then, uh, stay away and be careful of the dreaded, uh, dreaded Hondo Creek, <laughs> Hondo Creekosaurus. All right, uh, Trevor from Bury St. Edmunds, England, writes and says, the, I always thought Pachycephalosaurus was an omnivore uh, and that they use their heads for more than just bashing into each other. I completely and absolutely agree with you, Trevor. I think Pachycephalosauruses were omnivorous. They looked like it to me when you look at their tooth design. I think they could have been omnivorous. And I also agree with you that these dinosaurs did not solely use their heads to run into each other. I think they used them for defense. I think they could have used them to knock down potential prey if in fact they were omnivorous. Uh, I think they also used them as a display mechanism to, uh, to show their rank in the family group, to show their age and their maturity. So there's much more to that head on a pachycephalosaurus than just being a battering ram or half of a bowling ball stuck in their head. And he also says that I think T-Rex was not just a scavenger. And again, I completely and absolutely agree with you. I believe that 80% of the time, Tyrannosaurus rex is an active predator. 20% of the time, he's uh, taking advantage of things he finds that are dead. But that dinosaur, in my opinion, is too big and his metabolism was too high to be able to survive hoping that he happens to just find a dead animal within walking distance. That to me is an absurd analogy. That animal cannot, there's not, di dinosaurs and animals just don't fall over dead on a daily basis and they fall over dead convenient to where you are. He would have to walk hundreds of miles in hopes of finding something dead and by that time the food is rotted, the meat is decayed and there's no uh, nutritional value in it. So I agree with you completely. Okay. Uh, Brian from Brooklyn, New York. You know, Brian, I was just in Brooklyn last week. Um, how, do poly how do paleontologists make money? And then he says, do you ever see yourself visiting New York? That's funny. Yeah, I was there. I will tell you this. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll be coming to New York with my traveling dinosaur exhibit, and I would love the opportunity to meet you in person, Brian. Uh, he says, how do paleontologists make money? There's a variety of different ways. Uh, some paleontologists work for museums, and they're on the payroll for that. Uh, some paleontologists work for universities and they're paid through the university. Some make money by cleaning the dinosaur bones that are discovered and they, they act as independent contractors. Uh, some paleontologists make money by writing books, uh, making public appearances, being on television. Myself, the way I make money is a couple of ways. I do public performances, so that's really my main form of income. <clears throat> Excuse me. I travel around and I speak at, at thousands and thousands of events every year and that's how I make the majority of my money. I also have uh, my Jurassic Fight Club. I make money by doing that. I write it uh, and I host a show and so uh, I make money doing that way. And then I also make money with my traveling dinosaur exhibit. Um, so I have a variety of different ways uh, and there's a lot of different ways to make money in the industry. Okay, uh, Alex from Richmond says, hey DG, first I must say your dinosaur exhibit looks awesome. Alex, it is awesome. It is nuts. The pictures that are on my website right now do not do it justice. It is absolutely incredible when you see it up close. He says, Sora Faganax is one of my favorite dinosaurs. Man, that's a wicked dude. One of these days when I get to bring my exhibit to your area or if you ever get to come see me and you see that Sauropheganax, he's a wicked dude. He says, my question is, do you think Ceratosaurus was amphibious as proposed by Dr. Robert Bakker? You know, uh, Alex, I do think Ceratosaurus was designed to be able to make a living in the water. 
Uh, I think he went in and he hunted fish. I think he clearly did that. And here's why. When you look at him, first of all, his tail is not stiff and rigid like other predatory dinosaurs. His tail is kind of wavy, sort of like the tail of a crocodile. He can kind of sort of do this thing, whereas other predatory dinosaurs had to move their tail this way. So he's got a tail that would be beneficial in the water. Second of all, you look at his hands. Ceratosaurus is one of the few predatory dinosaurs on Earth that had four fingers. Well, a fourth finger is that much more effective in helping you grab something like a slippery fish. So I believe that it would have been perfectly suited for grabbing fish. And finally, you look at his tooth design. His teeth are very, very different from all other predatory dinosaurs. His teeth are perfectly suited for slashing deep into a fish and hanging on to it. So putting all those things together, in my opinion, yes, I believe that uh, Ceratosaurus would have been capable of living on a diet of aquatic things like fish and turtles and that kind of stuff. So I agree with Dr. Bakker. It's very plausible. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Max from Chicago, Illinois said, how big was T-Rex? Max, he was big. Um, T-Rex probably stood about 20 feet tall, uh, was 43 to maybe 45 feet long. And the reason why I'm using these maybes is because we don't know if we've ever found the biggest. Uh, but based on uh, those that we find, I think 45 feet would be a legitimate length, and I think 20 feet tall would be a legitimate height. And he probably ranged between five and maybe seven, maybe seven and a half tons. He is an absolute giant. Okay, uh, Hamash from Man, uh, Mandevil, Jamaica. I guess it's Mandevil, not Mandeville. Maybe it's Mandevil, whatever it is. Uh, you can let me know, uh, Hamash. Uh, let's see, he writes, who would win in a fight uh, between Brachiosaurus and T-Rex. Well, again, these guys didn't live together, so they never would have fought. But if they did, even though Tyrannosaurus is a monster, an adult Brachiosaurus is just way too big, way too powerful. There's just no way Tyrannosaurus could have dealt with something that big. And finally, Kevin from, wow, this is a tough one, Kapsu Casing, Ontario? I hope I pronounced that right. Kap, Kapus Casing? Wow, I don't know. Write to me, write to me, Kevin, and explain to me how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, he said, T-Rex is known to be one of the largest dinosaurs and stands up around 15 to 20 feet tall. Is it true that Spinosaurus can grow much larger than T-Rex? Well, yes. Uh, T-Rex was one of the largest predatory dinosaurs, Kevin. And yes, Spinosaurus was taller and longer, but... He's only taller because of that sail on his back. If you take that big, thin sail off of his back, Spinosaurus is not, not nearly as tall as Tyrannosaurus rex. And more importantly, Spinosaurus is nowhere near as robust or heavy as a T-Rex. They're just built completely different. It's like comparing a giraffe and an elephant. Uh, yeah, the giraffe is taller, but look at its body design compared to an elephant. That's kind of how you compare T-Rex and Spinosaurus. Okay, that's it for this time. If you've got questions you want to ask me, go to my website, DinosaurGeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page and send me your question. While you're there, uh, sign up to follow me on Twitter and join my Facebook uh, family. It's a lot of fun. We do some cool stuff. Until next time, take care of yourself and take care of the people around you. Make sure for you young people, you practice your manners and you practice your reading because those things are both very important. Take care, everybody, and watch out for the dreaded Hondo Creekosaurus. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.